Joe Biden stands firm on the ban of offensive weapons in the Second Amendment, emphasizing that rifles are futile against government forces, suggesting that F-15s would be necessary for any significant resistance. Yet, this declaration coincides with the troubling conviction of his son, Hunter Biden, for federal gun possession. I used to be a law, when I was no longer the vice president, I became a professor at the University of, of uh, Pennsylvania. Before that, I taught a constitutional law class, and so I taught the, the Second Amendment. There's never been a time that says you can own anything you want. And never. You couldn't own a cannon during the Civil War. No, I'm serious. Think about it. How many of you ever heard this phrase? The blood of liberty. Wash of those. Give me a break. No, I mean it. Seriously. And by the way, if they want to think that is to take on government, if we get out of line, which they're talking again about, well, guess what? They need F-15s. They don't need a rifle. Folks, look, this is crazy what we're talking about. Because whether we're Democrats or Republicans, we want our, our families to be safe. The right to bear arms is often seen as a cornerstone of personal and national security, fiercely defended by many. Biden's claim that rifles are insufficient to counter government oppression seems to sidestep these deeply held beliefs. For many, banning offensive weapons is viewed as a constitutional breach, stripping away a fundamental means of protection and a bulwark against tyranny. Biden's assertion that only F-15 fighter jets could challenge government authority underscores the immense power imbalance between citizens and the state, stoking fears of unchecked governmental power. This notion of needing military great equipment for resistance, only magnifies concerns about overreach. Meanwhile, Hunter Biden's gun-related conviction casts a shadow over the administration's stance on gun control. This juxtaposition of Joe Biden's advocacy for stringent gun laws with his son's legal troubles can be seen as deeply hypocritical, potentially eroding public trust in the administration's policies.